Up to this point in my programming endeavor, I had never employed the use of AI in my code. It was always something I wanted to try because of one factor, the non-deterministic nature of it. This lets us get wildly different results from the same input, leading to more versatility and creativity in a program. With how advanced AI has gotten in the past couple years, especially with the creation of ChatGPT, it's actually really easy to forget you're talking to an artificial intelligence, and not just the world's smartest human and fastest typer. I find myself always struggling not to give a little thank you after I receive a helpful response, humanizing it just that much more for me. Anyways, I thought it would be a really humorous project to try and fool people that they're talking to a real person, specifically to waste their time. And who else better to fool than phone scammers? I know Kit Boga has a video using AI to mess with these scammers, but I also want to get a little bit of revenge myself, since the problem of phone scammers hits me pretty close to home. Two of my grandparents have recently been far too trusting in these scammers, which has led to them losing thousands and thousands of dollars. You can't blame my grandparents, of course, as these scammers specifically try to prey on the most vulnerable population, the elderly. It's truly despicable. Me. <laughs> Anyways, I'll run you guys through the basic process of getting this program up and running. All of this is written in Python, since Python makes interacting with OpenAI's API extremely intuitive. First, we tell the AI their role. We say, hey, you're an old lady and you'll be talking on the phone to a scammer. Waste their time with false information and tell long-winded stories occasionally. This essentially gives us an old lady version of ChatGPT. You ask it to open their laptop and they start telling you about mother toads and mayo cakes. But it's still just a chatbot. This is where we have to employ a speech-to-text AI, also provided by OpenAI. We wait for whoever is unlucky enough to be on the phone to talk, record it, send that to the AI, and wait for the text transcription. This transcription is then fed directly to our old lady chatbot from which a text response is formulated. This text is now run through a grandmother text-to-speech AI, which gives us an audio file that we can then play for the scammer. Great, we can officially mess with scammers completely automated, but there's one huge problem. It's slow. Way too slow. I mean, for the amount of calculations required to do all these complex tasks, it's mind-bogglingly fast, but still far too slow to hold a normal phone conversation without anything seeming fishy. In my testing, it took anywhere between 5 and 15 seconds to generate an audio response to the caller. Sure, we can add some ums or uhs or can you repeat that for me while formulating a response, but this kind of just turned me off from actually testing the bot in any real scenario. Anyways, I'll give you guys a little live demo of the basic skeleton of it. Um, also ignore the TTS voice, I didn't bother to train an elderly model, this default was just temporary. Alright, so here's a little live demo. Um, we can see, we can just define the personality trait of the AI just like this. This one is an angry grandpa who doesn't like getting scammed. Um, so let's boot it up. Hello sir, I'm from Microsoft. I need to talk to you about viruses on your computer. I would also like to see your social security number, please. You can see it finished recording, and then it transcribes it really quickly, actually. Very accurate. Get lost, you and scamming piece of shit. I'm not giving you my info or falling for your damn which, virus you know, lies. It was pretty quick, but nowhere near quick enough to really hold a conversation. Of course, all the code will be provided on GitHub if you want to try it out yourself. Anyways, from this, I basically have a chatbot from which I can super easily define the personality and functionality of, so I know I had to turn it into something else. Have an AI minion Twitch streamer that cranks 90s on Fortnite. The way this works is essentially the same way, but with a few new features. First of all, rather than taking speech, converting it to text, then feeding that to the bot, I instead pull messages from a Twitch chat, then feed that to the bot. The way we do this is actually super simple. There's tons of resources directly from Twitch on writing a chatbot. Twitch chat is just an IRC, so we just create a new thread of execution, wait for messages to come in, store them in an array, then feed them directly to the bot. We include the chatter's username so our little minion streamer can respond directly to them. Of course, since this minion is a Twitch streamer, he'll need to have a face cam. I could load a 3D model into software such as Blender and animate the model's mouth according to their speech, but since this was just meant to be a quick project and not actually used, I instead settled for a series of pictures where the minion is either playing the game, talking, or reading chat. The talking animation is just a series of different shape mouths overlaid on top autos, which I just quickly edited in Photoshop. Now we have a minion streamer with a face cam that interacts with chat, but what if I also want him to interact with the game? Of course, I'm not going to create an AI that plays Fortnite for him since that'd be far too complex, but I'd like him to react to certain elements on screen such as shield and HP. The way I implement this is by having the script take a screenshot of the game, crop the picture so it's just the numbers for shield and HP, run it through a quick enhancement to really highlight the text, then run that through an existing image to text script that runs locally and really quickly. Now that we have the HP and shield information as integers, we just have to inform Sir Otto of his current predicament. He can then react accordingly. 
Of course, using this method, we'd be able to react to any text on screen following the same simple steps, but again, I'm not going to bother to implement them. So yeah, that's about it. We just have to set up a screen capture on OBS and stream him getting some victory royales. At the end of the video, I'll attach a few short clips I found entertaining. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching and for all the support on my last video. It was really only meant as a technical showcase for my resume, but since you all enjoyed it so much, I'll definitely be uploading some other fun projects on here as a hobby. If you have any other questions, tips, concerns, or projects for the future, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to get back to as many of you as I can. Bye. Otto, hey there, WU014. Your friend wants me to use her supporter creator code? Well, as much as I love supporting others, I'm afraid I only use code Minion Master. <laughs>